and welcome back to another one of Dale's Daily Devotionals. We're really glad to have you here today and joining us for this week as we are talking about repentance. Repentance is something that our nation is quickly forgetting that it is needing. In fact, there are some movements out there trying to teach that repentance is not necessary and is no longer needed. In fact, some people are preaching that it never was needed in the first place. In the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 46 and 47, it says, And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Jesus found it very important to preach repentance. As we talked about yesterday, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus Christ, was sent out preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is unmistakable that God is expecting people to repent of their sins, to turn from their wicked ways, and come Come toward him. While the word repentance does not necessarily show up in the Old Testament, it is, in fact, a heart change is mentioned many times where God has asked people to forsake their sins, to turn toward God, and that's really what repentance is. While we did not use that translation, that word, particularly in the translation of the Old Testament, does not mean that repentance still does not exist. We are to repent, to recant, to turn away from our sins, and to turn our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength over to God. He does require that of us. Now, there is no actual sinner's prayer, per se, in Scripture. Why is that? Why, if, if repentance is so important, and us preachers always say, raise your hand if you want to give your heart to Christ and repeat this prayer after me, and why do we ask you to repeat a prayer after us if there is no real sinner's prayer? Well, Honestly, the sinner's prayer is something that actually should come from your heart. It's something that should be coming from us directly to God. You know, when we do a when we do a wedding, when I perform a wedding ceremony, I ask a groom to say to his bride, and likewise, I ask the bride to say to the groom a, a, a set of vows. And I, do you vow and covenant before God and these witnesses to take him only as your lawful husband, to keep him only to yourself as long as you both shall live? And I ask that same thing in like manner. They say, I do. And then I get them to repeat some vows after me. I do vow and covenant before God and these witnesses to take you as my lawful wedded wife, to have and to hold, to love and to cherish until death do us part. I ask the bride and the groom to repeat something after me. I have a set of vows for them that I ask them to repeat after me. It's because unless they have written their own vows, we're going to help them to make that commitment. And we give them a verbal commitment. That's really what a sinner's prayer really is. It's a pastor helping you to make a verbal commitment before God. Now, if you repeat that prayer after that pastor, that doesn't necessarily mean you got saved. Crickets? Hmm. No, just because you repeated a prayer doesn't mean you actually gave your heart to God. What it does mean is you repeated a prayer after a pastor. Now, if you do repeat that prayer and you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and that you are truly sorry from your sins and you're ready to return back to God and walk away from your sins and walk away from your past, then God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and will do so. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It's us putting our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It's not our faith and trust in the pastor who's given us the prayer. It's the faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why there is no sinner's prayer in Scripture is because it really should come from the heart of man directly to the heart of God. God, I'm so sorry. I have messed up. I have made mistakes. But God, I turn my back on my sins and I give my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength to you today. Forgive me. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. If you pray a prayer something like that and you mean it with all of your heart, with all intents, then you are forgiven, my friend. Your sins are forgiven, forgotten forever, under the blood, washed away, and never to return turn again. What happens if I mess up? God has grace for that. That's for another devotional, another day. But today, my friend, repentance must be preached because if we do not repent of our sins, our nation is in trouble, but even more so, we're in trouble because I wouldn't want to miss heaven for the world. May God bless you and keep you until the day that God calls us all home. Until then, keep your eyes on the skies because Jesus is coming really soon.